So welcome to the Membrane Protein Interaction Lab. Uh, I'll show you uh, the instrumentation of the frozen spectrometer and how we, are, we can use this to measure some of the processes of the given sample. So this is a frozen spectrometer uh, that is uh, a product of Hitachi Japan. This is a model of so this instrument has, uh, uh, it, it is a, you can scan um, the fluorescence at uh, emission as well as excitation marks. So uh, if we come closer, I'll show you the uh, how the instrument look like. They look like, look at this, this is what we call the sample folder where you can place the sample in a cuvette. Okay. So, uh, if you look at this uh, uh, instrumentation setup, you can see uh, two optical uh, paths uh, horizontal to each other. Okay. So, you can, if you observe it clearly, come closer and you can see that uh, there, is, there is a blue light that you can observe in the bottom of the cuvette. So, that shows that uh, there is a particular wavelength of light that is hitting on the uh, bottom of the cube, you can consider here, right? Here you can see the, uh, yeah, you can see that how oh, the blue color light that actually shows that uh, the particular wavelength is fitting here. So, when the light passes through the sample, so the molecules uh, will get excited, and if it contains a fluorophore, it will emit a fluorescent light. That would be detected by the second detector that is at 30 degree to the uh, light, light path. So this is exactly opposite to that of the UV spectrometer where you have a detector slightly across the sample where the absorbed light is going to get measured. Here we are measuring the fluorescence that is why they have made the fluorescent detector at the 90 degree to the sample path light. Okay, so that is your instrument uh, maker. So, uh, this is what we call the cuvette. This cuvette is made up of quartz glass, uh, which has uh, all the pore size are uh, transparent. If you look at the other UV spectrometer uh, cuvettes, they are only transparent at one side, two sides, right? The other two sides will be opaque. This is, since our optical arrangement is going to be vertical, not vertical, uh, this is a it is going to be at 90 degrees to each other, we need all the four sides, uh, sides of the cure to be <coughs> transparent. So now <coughs> we will be, I will be showing you how to take uh, the, uh, how to measure the fluorescence. So this uh, sample that we have uh, is the media of, uh, uh, in which uh, a bacteria that expresses a fluorescent GFP is grown. So we expect this media to have some of the GFP molecules. This GFP is not a pure GFP molecule. We have engineered it with another uh, small pack. So uh, the, the original fluorescent spectrum of the GFP may sometimes get altered. So we can check that by measuring the fluorescence of this particular sample where the fusion GFP gene uh, is expressed and we, 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 we expect the protein to be present in this molecule. So what we are going to do now is we have to open this. So make the, make sure everything is clean. We have to clean the uh, cures on all the four sides. So even a small uh, scratches or small darts is going to interfere with your uh, fluorescent muscle. So now I place this in the sample folder. As I have shown you already, you can see the fluorescence uh, hitting at the, uh, the sample. So then we will close it. So now we will move to the softer part of the beacon. So this is the method. We can focus it close. So that you can see, we are, we are going to measure is the emission. And we are going to observe the fluorescence. We have to excite the molecules at 403 because uh, the general excitation wavelength of the fluorescence is going to be 395 nanometer. Since we have engineered, we have tested it, and we saw, we have seen that 
this molecule will give maximum fluorescence when you excite it at 403. So that we have put it as excitation wavelength. And emission wavelength should be always uh, larger than the excitation wavelength. As we know that the fluorescence you will get in the longer wavelength and in the lower energy. So then, uh, so we'll start from 420. So And also we should limit our uh, scan to twice the amount of your excitation wavelength because beyond that you will get a couplet uh, that is not going to be used for editing in your data. So I restricted myself to the uh, emission wavelength of 600 nanometer. So this is the instrumentation setup. Then you can uh, start the measurement. You can see that instrument will get ready. Then when you get this ready signal, then we can go ahead with the measurements. Okay. You can see that there is a fluorescence and so the emission is recorded. You can see that this particular molecule, when it gets excited at the 403 nanometer, you will see a peak at around 495. Show that. Uh, a diagram where you can see the peak, you can see that apex is at 483.6 nanometer. So it is uh, generally, you can observe the fluorescence of normal GFP at around 510. So since uh, we are attacked the small uh, fusion protein along with that, uh, we assume that this uh, interaction between these two proteins probably a little bit changes the emission wavelength of the fluorescent protein. So the, for to confirm that we have to do further experiments. So this particular simple uh, experiment has shown you uh, what is the fluorescence, uh, what is the fluoros spectro fluorescence spectrometer, and how we can measure the fluorescence of a sample. For the uh, detail, I mean uh, uh, the description of what is fluorescence and what uh, how this fluorescence should be used in biological research. We'll uh, uh, see you in a separate video for link, the link for which I'll be attaching to this video. Thank you.